In an industrial area of South Auckland, this converted office block is the unassuming home to the most famous hip-hop dance studio in the world. Winning gold on the international stage for the last three years in a row has cemented its reputation as world class. <laughs> Studio founder Paris Goebel is an internationally acclaimed choreographer. Working with big names like J Lo, Nicki Minaj, and Janet Jackson. Every year, the studio holds open auditions where Paris will hand-select her dance crews to be part of the palace. People come to throw everything they have at their dream of being selected as a member of the esteemed studio. Today is the last day for the auditions. Everyone's been working hard. Oh, it's been a long lifetime dream to be in the Royal Family, as, a, as for everyone that's here, actually. Oh, it would mean so much. I've been following them since I was 14. Uh, I saw a request win their first medal, and that just inspired me that this was in my own country. It's in my backyard. People come from all over the world just for this audition. Today, there is a contingent from China auditioning, along with dancers from the UK, the US and France. I was like a fan of Royal Family and Paris Gobert, so I wanted to try the audition today. I'm from Melbourne, Australia, so I've just trained over there in hip-hop for about 13 years. The palace is the dream, so I just thought, I'm 24 now, I might as well try out for my dream, and here I am. When you've got the world's best right here, and from, from Melbourne to here, it's only four hours. I mean, I wait for the cheap flights, I'm not going to lie, but um, it's worth it. I mean, you know, I would spend whatever I need to spend to get here. I think to be a part of the royal family or the palace, you definitely, if you don't have a strong work ethic, you're going to get one, that's for sure. And working hard has seen Paris clock up multiple gold medals, including the current title for Best International Choreographer. I love dance, I really do, and I feel like when you love something, you just want to be the best. The man behind the machine is her father and manager, Brett Goebel. Do I mean to be intimidating? Yes, 100%. It's an audition, people. You can sit down as long as you want. You can fan yourself as long as you want. But if you've come to get in the royal family, I'll tell you, I'm not the one choosing, but I'll be saying, no, they stood still during all the whole audition. Don't choose them. They don't like to work. Unbelievable. Because then people know where they stand. <laughs> There's no gray area. It's black or white. When people feel intimidated, is when they're doing something they shouldn't be doing. It's that easy. Brett's no-nonsense approach is one of the reasons the studio is such a success. We just set out to be the best that we can be, and we suddenly became the best in the world. I ain't even wanna diss you, but tell me what is this issue? 
today, tension is high. Older members are guarding their places against the new talent who are keen to impress. Everyone wants the opportunity to shine, knowing being picked could lead to much bigger opportunities. The senior dancers get to travel the world. We've got dancers making shows around the world. We just booked one of our boys last year who's now dancing back up for Chris Brown. Six of our girls danced in the Michael Jackson show, Las Vegas for two years. All those types of things are just great opportunities for kids that, you know, who normally would think dance can't be a career, but actually now it can. I have like a really good eye with dances. I can just see it. I just really recognize when someone's got something that I know that I can help. I don't have to necessarily be the best, just have that passion, that fire um, that I think will work well under like our work ethic and our, our journey. Passion is just a huge thing. Like being able to get on the floor and just show that you're passionate about dance and that you want to be there is a really big thing. Today, there are two young men who bring plenty of passion, but can they deliver with their dance? Mikey Mitsua Kore has danced for the palace in the past, but this by no means secures him a place this year. I think anyone that's been with us knows that like, if you come back, you have to definitely like, re-earn your spot. We have to hold our ground, hold our reputation, and then also improve and show Paris that we are worthy of being here. Yeah. Mikey is joined by his brother Joseph, who is also auditioning today. So there was a lot of new talent, and Paris is wanting that. But that's the thing, we need to make sure that we keep our rotation up and we just stay strong. For me and my brother, we know someone else wants us what? You know, so we need to fight for it. It's like a clean slate this year, regardless if your previous RF members or you're currently with them now, like it, it's a whole clean slate today. And I mean, if you don't perform and you don't up your game, she could not, like, she might not pick you. I mean, we're always having to be on our game. And she always says to us that you can't be comfortable being in the royal family because things could change. It's not a given that anyone's gonna get in. Like, everyone has to audition. You know, like, no one gets in automatically. Even if you're really good, you were good last year, like, everyone has to audition. Yeah, it has to be like a fair process. Paris opened the Palace Studio in 2008 when she was just 16. She had already put together an all-female dance crew called Request. It was a place for them to practice. So when I opened the studio, I was happy to have a space where we could train, like we didn't have to like train in my dad's warehouse with like broken mirrors or like, you know, before that was my auntie's gym. So I was just really happy and proud to have a space that I could call my own. It wasn't long before Request took on the world champs winning gold at their first international competition. You know the feeling of winning is such a good feeling. Because, you know, really it's just like someone giving you a pat on the back for all the hard work you've done, you know, a rewarding you of, of what you've given to the competition. That's kind of what sparked that, that winning mentality for me. 
That winning mentality has seen her crews gain gold the last three years in a row. When you win, you want all you want to do is win, <laughs> right? All you want to do is win. And people that can relate to me would totally understand you don't want to come second ever again. Brothers Joe, Mikey and their friend Mel from Australia are hoping to make it into the royal family. After finishing their auditions earlier today, they are waiting anxiously by the computer for the results to be posted on the Palace Facebook page. It's three past six and... Still waiting still for waiting, results. Still, still waiting. Still... <laughs> no. It's been a long three days, you know. Um, yeah. And refresh we go. <laughs> no, <Nah>, still nothing. <laughs> no, nothing it's like a, it's just testing, testing. Yeah. Mr. Goble, hurry up. You just, just mix the motions. You never know. You just, yeah. you never know. What. The tables can turn. Yeah. So. It's just hard. <laughs> Maybe just refresh it now. <laughs> just to check. You know. It's not up yet, it's not up. No, it's not. Mike and Joe are staying with friends for the audition, but they come from small town Aotearoa. I'm from a small town called Tukuroa. Yeah, it's a very small place with no opportunities. I know there's like opportunities for like rugby and league and that, but for like the dance industry, it's very small. You could work at a supermarket or you could work at a countdown. We played rugby, we played rugby league, we did athletic sports, boxing, kickboxing. I'm a dancer now, um, and it's not exactly what my father wanted for us, I guess, when he was bringing us up. But I thank him for kind of disciplining us in all those sports because they have helped me to become the person I am today. I actually dreamed of being in the palace when I was very, very young. Joe and Mike are fulfilling their dance dreams, but feel in some way that they might be letting down their rugby mad dad. Well, I've never heard of a family um, that has two gay brothers that um, are both dancers that have the same interests that have moved to Auckland to pursue this career. So I guess it's kind of hard for my father to kind of accept that. There's like, you know, a small part of me that I feel like he is disappointed in, you know, we're, we're dancers, we're not, you know, these rugby league players. I guess it's kind of a, a Billy Elliot type story for a Tokoro boy moving to Auckland, so, yeah. But for me, in my eyes, I was like, I'll show you one day something that I really love, and it's gonna be dance. I'll show you that one day. It might take me a couple of years, but I'll show you it. The boy's opportunity for a successful dance career starts here. This evening, the palace will reveal who makes it into their cruise. OK, a refresh really? for Joey. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Refresh again. <laughs> it's up. <laughs> okay, really? All right, Royal Family 2015. Oh, oh cool. Yay! Yay! Oh, darlings. Um, Unfortunately, despite giving it everything, Mel is not listed in the crew. Yeah. <laughs> It's all good. It's okay, Mel. But for the boys, they are happy to have made it in. I feel, you know, relieved. <laughs> and like, it's just good to know that our hard work's paid off over these yeah. last three days. And, you know, just to see our name on there, it's like, okay, you know, we're, we're back in again. It's another year. See you tomorrow at 6am at the hillside of the museum. <laughs> so training starts tomorrow morning. Yeah. And then tomorrow night, 5 till 9. And passion never, never has a day off. off. Today is the first day of the year for those lucky enough to make it into the Royal Family Dance Crew. I fly like people get high like planes If you catch me at the border there are many new faces, along with some older members who have secured their place for another year. This studio is the only place that could benefit me from New Zealand. With Paris and Brett, like, I've had more opportunities than like anyone could ask for. Um, my dreams to dance, back up dance for Beyonce and Fanaj, you know, like, that's the ultimate. Kyle Tootin is the head choreographer at the Palace. He 
is also gaining an international profile despite his age of just 19. My role at the studio basically is to be Paris when she's not here. I look after the crews as well as mixing music for the shows, teaching classes. And one, two, three, my head's gonna follow it. One, two, three, ha, ha. Carl is an amazing, talented dancer. He's only 19, but the way his brain works with dance, crazy. Hand me a beat so I feel complete. One, two, boom, boom, hands into a twister. Yeah? Five, six, seven, shot. Five, six, seven, shot. Hand me a beat so I feel complete like a pancake mixed with hands in a twister. This could never be mystic. One of the biggest challenges is just, especially when you're, I'm the same age, if not younger than a lot of them, I'm is sure. just establishing the fact that I'm a leader and I'm so young and telling all these people what to do and, I don't know, some people aren't used to that. So it's being a boss without being bossy and without being arrogant, yeah. In order to keep on top of their game, the dancers take classes multiple nights of the week, learning a different routine each time. The royal family are the adult members of the Palace Studio. Paris has some big plans for the crew this year as they take on the national champs. Focus, focus in the place to be. This year we're going to do a little bit different. We're going to take the girls and do all girl mega crew and then take the boys and do uh, all boy adult crew. This will be Carl's first time choreographing his very own senior crew for competition in nationals. So don't just blank, you look, you're eyeing out every single person in the audience and telling them something else. Everyone is on tender hooks as there are only eight positions for over a dozen hopefuls. No one's safe. The eight's just eight spots that's there for everyone to take. Paris has a hugely successful international career as a choreographer. This year she has travelled to 15 countries in six months but one of her highlights has been coming home to work on New Zealand film Born to Dance. To me it means a legacy for New Zealand hip hop. You know, this is, it's history and it's going to be so epic and it, I think it's going to do so well internationally and it's going to put um, our talent on the stage even more. In the past she has choreographed for big names like Jennifer Lopez and Janet Jackson. Before I did this or achieved anything, there was no other New Zealander I really looked at and was like, if they can do it, I can do it. And that's the truth. All I had was my parents on the side cheering me on, saying, you can do it, you can do it. And that was enough for me to believe that I could do it, you know? I've worked so hard to achieve this. I can only hope that there's some young New Zealand kid in the middle of Southside, you know, saying, you know, if she can do it, I can do it. Ice cube, baby. Five, six, seven, eight, eight. I kind of like this stop because it gave it opportunity for us to miss you. So yeah. I think this stop's cool. Maybe we just lean away. Maybe just like this. Do you know what I mean? Paris has an unorthodox approach to her process of choreographing dance moves. I do everything on the spot. Everything I do, I do it on the spot. I never prepare or prep. Um, yeah, it's just how I work best. Yeah, I just trust myself. I just let it happen and there's something about that spontaneousness of being in the room with people around in a song and just seeing what happens. There's something about that that makes me feel like alive. Yeah, I way prefer it than being at home, like 
stuck in a mirror like with my headphones trying to make something up. It's way cooler with people around you. One of Paris's longest and indeed strongest dancers is Kaya Pierce. Look at y'all looking ass hitters, stop looking at my ass hitters. Look at y'all lying ass hitters, talking about his paid off for this fine ass lying ass hitter. This is my sixth year. I've been here since day one, since they started the crew, since I was really young. Twelve, I think. Yeah, twelve. I was a baby. <laughs> I'm shy and, yeah. I'm confident when I'm on stage, but when I'm not, I'm a little bit awkward. When I'm like normal, I'm just like, hi. <laughs> I'm not the best talker. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Same cup in the hand, ass hitter in the club with a credit card scam, ass hitter. When I dance, I just become someone else. It's like the only place I feel comfortable and I feel like I can. Just do anything. Kaya's younger sister, Ruthie, also dances at the palace, but she's in a more junior crew. <laughs> Kaya's whanau moved to Auckland from their hometown of Whangarei so the girls could attend nightly rehearsals at the studio. Although the intention is to eat healthy, when we're running late, which is like every other day, it's grab something quick and fast. Even though she's my sister, I really look up to her. The big thing about her that makes her like Kaya is like her performance. Like she's very good at performance. She's not shy or anything. Like, yeah, just, yeah, she's very good. During training, she always comes up to me, asking me if I like, need help or anything, or like tells, gives me feedback. But then when she just gives me too much, I get like kind of annoyed. I'm just like, oh, shut up and stuff like. Yeah, my mum always grills us for fighting. No phones and no use the thing during dinner time. Okay? Kaya's not as confident as Ruth within herself, uh, and she's always been that way. And then when she started to dance, that slowly changed, but it's, she still doesn't have that confidence to go up to someone and carry out a conversation, whereas Ruth wouldn't hesitate to do that. So they're just very different. One's like the father and one's like the mother, and I'm not going to say which is which. <laughs> yeah, pretty much sums up. <laughs> Tonight, Carl plans to reveal who will make it into his exclusive all-male crew to take to the New Zealand champs. So tonight we announced the eight crew members competing in nationals for Kings. We announced the boys in front of the whole royal family. So it's a joint decision between me, Paris, and often Brett. Joe and Mikey are strong contenders, but they have their issues. I've been told again and again that my timing's not very good, um, and it's just listening to the music and not being ahead of the music. For me, my brother's always timing. <laughs> not gonna lie, but we, we always improve on that bit by bit, so I guess it's just timing all together. So he's always making sure that we're nice and crisp and sharp with our movement. The eight that's going to competing nationals hasn't been confirmed yet. So everybody's in a position where Everyone's fighting for their spot um, because nothing's been confirmed. I actually don't know when it's going to be announced. Hopefully tonight, maybe. I think we're training after this. So. Hey, everyone, just come for a quick minute. Sorry, just forgot a few things. We are going to announce the eight boys who will be representing us at Nationals for Kings. We, if we could, we'd take everyone, but we have to choose eight and we have to do it today. So, Carl. The pleasure is yours to announce the eight. Awesome. You're representing us. Okay. You can announce yourself first. Okay, myself. Carl! Yeah. It's all it's so exciting. It's all about you. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, um, congratulations, Alex. Oh. Desmond. Yeah. Justice. Yeah. Mikey. And Jojo. Todd. And last one, um, I'd say the, the fireball, um, is Alva. <laughs> so again, just obviously, um, thank you to all the boys for always working hard and 
pushing. It wasn't exactly an easy decision as we've been like swapping in and out. Like Paris always says, it's just one thing. We've got so much other things planned for the year that we need everyone to keep working hard and keep pushing everyone, yeah? So congratulations to those guys. Family on three. One, two, three. Family. Coming up next week, Kyle struggles to get some respect. This is the palace. The most important thing in the studio is the palace, not you. And if you don't like that, go somewhere else. And the palace has an extraordinary surprise for its dancers. This is probably the biggest thing that's happened to the palace. She's going to skate really soon and my heart's like, like this. And I think it would be, you know, a dream come true. Mahinui, Ki New Zealand on air.